All right, guys, and welcome back to the channel again. Sorry, I can't be using the camera. I didn't charge it. And I quite like these videos when I'm away. I'll give you a quick update as to what's happening in the market. And also, I have something quite interesting to talk about. And that is, I actually managed to talk, not face to face, but on Telegram with someone who was impersonating me. Now, this conversation wasn't anything like I had expected to happen. I genuinely thought that I would uh, not get any information out of them. But it turns out that I did get some surprising information and it you like, like I said, it totally wasn't what I was expecting. So we're going to go through that in a second. But first of all, let's just quickly check out the old cryptocurrency market. And hey, guys, today it's Friday. Things aren't looking too good. We're down 2.6% overall on the cryptocurrency market. But remember, guys, we are just trending between 30,000 and 40,000 before we break through one of these resistance or support, we don't really know where we are in the market, right? Everyone always is super optimistic as we're going up, super fud and bearish as we're going down, but we've been in this same sideways pattern for you know, months now. So there's no point in looking at it on the daily, on the hourly, whatever it is. Well, in my opinion, you know, I don't really think that there's much point. If you're a long-term holder like me, if obviously if you're trading the swings, you're day trading, that sort of thing, then awesome. Yeah, check out the, the smaller timescales. But if we're trying to figure out where we are in the market, my opinion is we don't know what's happening short-term. And obviously long-term, super bullish, so much good stuff coming out. We even have one of the fudsters, the main Fudster themselves, Bank of America, who came out countless times saying they're not about cryptocurrency and all that sort of stuff. But Bank of America creates team dedicated to researching crypto. Guys, it's literally taking over the world, right? Crypto is taking over the world. Blockchain technology is going to make such a huge difference for so many people, so many industries, so many different things you know, you can't even imagine. As you can obviously tell from my voice, I'm super bullish on crypto. There is so much use case for blockchain and crypto across the whole planet. Banks are obviously in on this, right? They're just so obviously in on it. Like I've said so many times on this channel, I believe wholeheartedly that there is manipulation going on behind the scenes. It's manipulation that's causing this. It's also manipulation that's causing this, right? There's just so much manipulation happening because as you know, crypto is a completely unregulated market. Because of that unregulation, we have some issues in the UK right now with banks starting to have a problem with Binance, right? So just the other day, the FCA, so our version of the SEC, if you are in America, basically came out and gave a warning about Binance and saying that they're not allowed to do regulated activities in the UK. Things like CFD trading, futures trading, that sort of thing would be considered regulated. Binance spot trading, so simply buying Ethereum, buying XRP, Cardano, Bitcoin, all of that sort of stuff isn't regulated. So in my opinion, they're not going to shut down Binance, right? That's not going to happen. What we may see is something like in the US where they have Binance.us, right? So we'll have Binance.uk, something like that. So people are panicking. To add fuel to that fire, we've had a number of different banks coming out and denying access to Binance. Now, just yesterday, Santander, who I actually bank with, has blocked payment to the crypto exchange for that. On Monday, we had Barclays ban it. And then last month in June, we had NatWest put a limit on how much money customers could put onto exchanges, right, which included Binance. So this is banks in the UK, everywhere in the world, having a problem with people putting their money into exchanges. Now, if that doesn't seem like manipulation to you, I don't know what is. That's what it seems like to me. It seems like banks are realizing that the power of money may fall into the hands of the public and they don't want that to happen because they make money when you leave your money in their bank, right? That's how, that's the whole business model of a bank. They only make money if your money is in their bank. I just think that it's, uh, you know, ridiculous that these banks are banning payments to something like Binance. Binance will just bend to the will of the government, right? If we need to, if they need to make a new exchange for the UK only, they'll do exactly what they did in the US. And then we'll continue to be able to buy things on the spot market unless the governments in the UK do step in and let's say they ban cryptocurrency fully. But we have places like Nigeria where they actually banned Bitcoin, right? They banned crypto and turns out it's still booming in Nigeria, right? The banks fully banned it but it's booming in Nigeria because people have found a way to get around the government bans and they want to hold Bitcoin because it's taking control of your money again. Now, I don't want to sound too much like a conspiracy theorist. I'm in this dark room in my hotel in Greece and I'm like talking into the mic like a super duper conspiracy theorist. I've got my tinfoil hat on. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I forgot to do my intro again, guys. If you don't know me already, 
Obviously, my name's Connor and I am not a financial advisor, just a guy sitting in a hotel room with a tinfoil hat on talking about cryptocurrency and changing the face of the planet as we know it. So if you like that sort of thing, smash up that like button, hit that subscribe button and let's continue with this video. So we've got the news of the banks, which, you know, it's a mixture of super duper hype right here and then we got FUD over in the UK but hey I think it's just simply manipulation right if we head over to Twitter this guy Crypto Monkey actually posted a very interesting chart that actually shows some on-chain data right here so if we make this a little bit bigger we can see that the supply on the outside of exchanges is actually growing so the supply of Bitcoin leaving the exchanges is growing while the supply on exchanges is going down so what this tells us is basically because the exchanges supply is decreasing so rapidly it basically means people are moving their bitcoin off an exchange like binance or crypto.com or whatever it is and they're moving it into cold storage right so therefore they plan to hold it for the long run they're long-term holders just like me possibly like you they're long-time holders and that's what they plan to do right so when we see money moving away from exchanges, we can see this as bullish momentum. And when we see uh, things like Bitcoin flooding exchanges, we see that as bearish. Sorry, I'm not sure if you can hear that outside, but someone's shouting nonsense. But that's what's happening right now as on-chain data. That's a very good sign in my opinion. I do, however, think that we're going to sit in this range, thirty to $40,000 for the short term, right? I think we're just going to bounce around here until we have some seriously good news that comes out. New countries adopting Bitcoin, new huge companies putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. If Tesla, you know, accepts Bitcoin again, that would be an awesome step in the right direction. However, as you know, on this channel, I find the fact that Elon Musk has so much say over the market very, very irritating. But hey, billionaires will be billionaires, right? So like I said, as we can see, Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market today is down quite a bit. But for me, overall, I am still fundamentally bullish technically we are in a bear trend there's no arguing that for me i'm just simply dollar cost averaging into my positions now there are various different ways that you can dollar cost average into the market you can do it daily you can do it weekly you can do it monthly what i've found is around the weekly area is the best because then you can catch the dips you can catch the pumps you can just continually adding your money to the market i have been making these sheets for different cryptocurrencies i have what it would look like if you invested daily weekly monthly since the last bull run in 2017 so you can see the power of long-term investing if you do want to have access to all of these spreadsheets that i've made everyone in my patreon has access to every single one of these spreadsheets so if you fancy it you can come over and join the patreon the link is down there in the description and for example this is the monthly investments into bitcoin so if you put in just let's say 400 dollars a month into bitcoin around the top of the bull run right so it's december 2017 you put 400 dollars and you continue to do that every month until right now you would be sitting at almost fifty thousand dollars in profit 282 percent. and remember right now we are at a 50 percent decline so that would actually have been a hundred thousand dollars profit for just four hundred dollars a month so if you're working nine to five that sort of thing try and put some money aside you know maybe have less coffees have less of whatever the luxuries is that you have in your life and maybe you can put some money towards this sort of thing obviously this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but this is what i've been doing and this is what has worked very very well for me and i started this chart at the last bull run so we can see what would happen if potentially now we are moving into a longer term bearish market right so like i said at the start of the video i just wanted to go through my conversation that i had with someone who's impersonating me so we will call him connor because that's his name over on telegram and after proving myself and proving that it was me we had quite an in-depth conversation and i just want to read it to you guys and then i just want to talk about uh what it makes me feel and what we can do with this so i asked him why he did it and he said well i suppose the best answer would be that i'm struggling to pay bills i broke his ankle he's in a situation financially he hasn't got the slightest clue how to make finance how to make it into financial freedom he's lost money in the cryptocurrency market currently not really enjoying life and he doesn't want to work 60 hours a week 
to basically live in a crappy house, a crappy car and live a boring life, right? He's not proud of scamming, nor does it ever really work. But we know it does work sometimes. And that's what, you know, it really gets to me. And it really upsets me when I see so many people, you know, uh, I get a lot of messages on Instagram, on Telegram, on loads of these different platforms where people have been scammed. One thing that really gets to me is that YouTube, Instagram, Telegram won't do anything about it. They won't give me a blue tick on any of the platforms. And it's so frustrating because I do leave my uh, real uh, social media handles underneath the dis in the description. So do check that out if anyone ever contacts you. But that's very frustrating. But he went on to say that I got him into Safe Moon, but he had to sell it because he had to pay for his bills and he just feels trapped, right? He's young, he's not a teenager, but he's young and in his low twenties and he wishes that he could do things like travel, buy stuff for his family, take his girlfriend out for nice dates and treat himself. And I totally understand. We've all been in that position. We've all been in a position where we want more money, but scamming people is not the right way. Now, I was super surprised to actually have this sort of conversation with someone. I just thought they would blow me off the second I actually proved myself that it was me, right? I've done this a few times now and they just simply block me. But this was my response. So you're young. I assume you're living in a country of opportunity and you have a job. That's so much more than a lot of people on earth. No matter what you're going through, you need to look around and be appreciative of the things you have. This is something that's so important, something that really helped me when I was growing up, when I was in my early 20s, is trying to be appreciative of the things that you have in life. It's very hard to do. It's very hard to look around and, you know, genuinely be appreciative of the things that you have. Sometimes, life is hard and sometimes life isn't so hard. Taking that step to be appreciative of what you do have currently really makes a huge difference, you know, both in your physical life and emotionally, right? So just moving on, no matter what you're going through, you need to look around and be appreciative of the things you have. Getting to a place where you can travel and do what you love takes time, hard work and dedication. If you have a job and live below your means, you can do it, but it's not easy. Think about the people who you are scamming. They are potentially just like you or worse and you steal money from them. Remember, they are desperate for the same things as you. I'm sure you're not a bad person, but it's time to change. You got this. Send the money back that you've scammed. Make amends. And start fresh. You'll be surprised what a few years of hard work will get you, right? So he responded pretty well from here. And we just spoke about giving the money back and how he rarely does it. And we spoke more about the pressures of social media and things like that. And, you know, my response to the social media pressures and wanting things like fast cars and big houses are they are short term gratifications, right? But the thing is, if you got to those short term gratifications, you're not going to enjoy them and you're not going to be happy if you had to scam a bunch of people to get there. So what we spoke about was different ways to make money online. And I think people miss that there's so much opportunity out there in the world, especially now that we have the Internet. If you work full time and you're struggling to pay your bills and you're, you know, you, you're working paycheck to paycheck, you need to start a side hustle. Now, I don't want this to sound condescending, but it is totally possible for you to do this. One thing that I did was definitely starting a drop shipping business. There is so much money to be made out there. It is hard work and it is not a get rich quick scheme like a lot of people think. And that's why a lot of scams are based around this because people want to get rich quick, but that's not how it works. You can build a proper drop shipping business if you build it like a real business and it's totally possible. You can freelance on things like Fiverr where you can sell, you know, copywriting, making websites, things like that. And you can learn that all on YouTube for free. You can become an affiliate marketer. So you learn Facebook ads and then you and then you advertise to people on Facebook. Again, you can learn all of that on Facebook, print on demand store. You can make merch for trending subjects, trending news, trending articles, things like that, and then promote them on things like Facebook. You can learn again how to do that on YouTube, blogging, I've not done that myself, selling information products, so making PDFs, making eBooks, things like that, selling them on Amazon, again, selling them on Facebook Marketplace, becoming an Instagram influencer. This takes time, but one thing that you can do for this is you can buy and sell Instagram pages. This is something that I did, and I made a lot of money for doing it. Just quickly, you can pick up an Instagram page for around $200 with around 10,000 followers. You can learn this right here on my YouTube, the videos right here that I use. This is exactly how I I did it, but you can buy these, you can build them over a few months and you can sell them for massive amounts of profit. You can use that profit to invest in a business, invest in crypto, invest in courses, that sort of thing. Not that I'm trying to sell you any course, but you can do that, right? Becoming a virtual assistant. So many people need this right now, especially people working from home, busy corporate jobs, things like that. And you can be a virtual assistant from home. That's the beauty of it. Sell your photography and get a part-time job. Obviously, if you work full-time, you can't do that, but maybe you're starting a side hustle, but you 
also want a part-time job, you can then take that extra money, you know, working for Uber, those sorts of things and invest that for your future. So that was my little video here. As always, I feel terrible for the people that have been scammed under my name. I'm so sorry for that. I do try and do everything that I can to stop this sort of thing. But also, obviously, people who are doing it do have situations where they're trying to get out of, right? And I understand that. And that's what this channel here is all about. I'm here to help you guys. I want to help you guys, you know, build money, build generational wealth in both cryptocurrency and all of the other opportunities that we have online. So if you like that sort of thing, do smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.